Giants trying to snap a three game losing streak. The Chargers just trying to beat a winning team for the first time this season. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, NFL.com's Pat Kerwin. Glad to be with you here on the NFL Preview Show presented by Tyson Anytizer. San Diego coming to New York. First ever meeting where Phillip Rivers and Eli Manning will both be starting the game and they'll be forever linked because of the fact that they were traded for each other. That's a side story. Here's the main story. Panic has set in in New York, and if the Yankees weren't winning the World Series, all anybody would be talking about is how bad the Giants have played the last three weeks. There's no doubt about that, and the lightning rod's over now. The World Series is over, and the Yankees are the world champs, so all interest will now turn to the Giants and the scrutiny of what's gone wrong with the team that in the last three weeks is giving up well over 30 points a game. And if they do that again, they'll be on a four-game losing yeah. streak. Well, Michael Bowley's expected to come back this week for the Giants. Good. Chris Canty expected to play for the Good. first time this season. Is that enough for this defense, which, as you said, given up that many points, nearly 400 yards a game the last three weeks, to fix things this week? Well, no, because C.C. Brown's still on the field, and the safeties are going to be up against Antonio Gates and some of these kids like Vincent Jackson. They know how to get that passing game right in on the safeties and avoid the corners if they want to. So this is going to be a high-scoring football game. And the question on the other side of the Giant roster is, what are you doing with your offense? Eli, in the last three weeks, three touchdowns, six interceptions. You cannot give the ball back to your opponent two extra times a game off interceptions on a short field and expect to win. And in a shootout like this, it might come down to the turnover battle. And right now, it looks like the Giants aren't playing very well in that area. No, they're not. They're certainly giving it away. And the Eagles, they're giving away big plays, too, which is a, oh, which is a huge problem. Plays. And Deshaun Jackson certainly uh, a big part of that last week. But, you know, something that takes the pressure off Eli Manning, if they can. Because whatever he wants mm -hmm. to say, this all started when this foot problem came about. Take the pressure off. Give the ball to Brandon Jacobs. Can he get going this week? I think this is a great week for Brandon Jacobs. I, I saw glimpses of it. If you look at Brandon Jacobs over the last three weeks, he's 4.7 a carry. And when they sit down to evaluate, evaluate themselves, Tom Coughlin, I've watched Tom before in, when he gets his, his team in bad situations. He really re relies on the run game to help him, whether it was when he was in Jacksonville or at the Giants. Here's a defense that lost their, their safety, excuse me, their nose tackle, Jamal Williams, and that's the core of a run defense. Yeah. I expect a lot of power run inside to Brandon Jacobs. No more 10 to 12 carries. I'm looking for about 22 carries from Brandon Jacobs, and if you do that, You've done two things. You'll move the ball down the field and you'll keep Phillip off the field. One thing that could help the Giants this week is that the Chargers so far this season have been very one-dimensional. They're second to last in the NFL uh, in running the football. A Danny and Tomlinson, a career high, 13 straight games without 100 yards yeah. on the ground. Can they be successful this week being one-dimensional? Can it all fall on Phillip Rivers? I think it's going to have to, and you, you recited the 13 games without 100. They are giving the ball to LaDainian a little bit more in the last two weeks. Start studying that, you'll see it. Does he get 100 yards against the team that gives up 116 a game? I don't think so. I think to win this game, the, the Chargers are going to have to throw the ball 35 times. They've had a game where he threw the ball 45 times mm -hmm. this year, so he's capable of calling it, and you know the North Turner is going to let that happen. I think this is the week you have to do it, go after this secondary. Here's the issue about the Giants. Well, where's that giant pass rush? It's so good. They got so many good passers. Yes, but everyone who's been playing them lately, three-step drop. They know those guys are coming, so they're getting the ball out early. When you have these big receivers, expect a short pass attack with run after the catch. Last time the, the uh, Chargers faced a team with a good pass rush was the Broncos. They did not win that ball game. They played the Chiefs and the Raiders since then. And, okay, fine, the defenses look better, but that's the Chiefs and the Raiders. You think this is a high-scoring football game. Who comes out on top? You know, I was a little disappointed in the Chargers last week. I thought they kind of fell asleep in their game against a team they should have dominated. And when I see them not dominate an opponent, I get a little lacking of wanting to pick them. I'm not going to pick them today. The Giants, not because they're backs through. Well, we've discussed that before. I just think that they will run the ball. I think they'll play better on offense. They're not going to give the ball up, and they'll win the game that way. So give me the Giants in a very close scoring, in a high scoring game, maybe 30 points each, somewhere in that area. And the Giants on CBS, 4.15 p.m. Eastern in the game of the week on CBS, and you can see it, of course, there, and get more of it here on CBSSports.com. That'll do it for the NFL Preview Show, presented by Tyson Anytizers, the meaty good man snack. For Pat Kerwin, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take, Take care, care, folks. folks.